Hello. Welcome everybody. I am the RPG Chick and I will be, will be playing Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom for this lovely Feed the Kids charity drive for random acts of kindness. How y'all doing today? So uh, I will be doing my best here, hoping for some decent, uh, some decent RNG from the bosses. So fingers crossed. Let's get my timer ready. All right, so I think I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Boop. So if uh, if you've never seen this game before, this is kind of uh, it's almost like a point and click, but not quite a point and click, where you get to check out different scenarios, look around, solve a few puzzles. All that fun, awesome stuff. But basically, the story is the evil Minister Pumpkin has kidnapped the princess. And uh, the whole kingdom is in turmoil because he has set loose his farmies all over the kingdom to terrorize all these poor fruits and vegetables. So, first area. So we pass by that little persimmon. We're gonna, we're gonna kind of skip him for now. Uh, and we're going to take some water because a lot of the stuff in this area is all dried out because the farmies have been neglecting it. And we're going to go back to that poor little persimmon who looked like he was choking. And we're going to give him some water. Oops. Do -do -do. All the farmies. So now we talk to him, and, and this is Percy. Percy is going to be our very clumsy, but still kind of useful sidekick. But hey, it's all delicious looking fruits and vegetables. I think some of them get eaten along the way, and I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But now that Percy saved, uh, so there's a lot of plot triggers and little things that you have to do and look at and check out before other stuff can happen. And that's basically what going through this game is. It's knowing what the plot triggers actually are. Oops, I want to look first. To do. Remember having nightmares from the battle scenes? The battle scenes are interesting. Uh, and when we finally get to a boss fight, like we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at those. But essentially, right now, um, Percy tells us that the other melons are in danger. So we're going to see if we can find them. And we come across Prince Lettuce, another dehydrated vegetable. We're going to give him some water, too. So he wakes up and uh, he tells us that there's a passage under the fence and then there's a bunch of dried up melons down there that need my help. So we're going to help them too. We're going to help as many fruits and vegetables as we can throughout the course of this. So here are the poor dried up melons. give them some water unfortunately not all the uh not all the pictures change so they still look like they're ready to die i'm sorry i'm sorry little vegetables you know if you want to help these poor vegetables before they die you can actually donate and therefore these poor vegetables will not go to waste they will be used to feed all the hungry kids all over the world But anyway, uh, we need to kind of move away from here. So by talking to the cantaloupe, we get this little pass and we can use it to go through uh, the guard that's standing at the gates. So we're going to use this pass and we're going to try to get into the city. Unfortunately, uh, we don't look like whatever person is in the picture. So the guard takes our pass 
and uh, tells us to go away. But luckily, Percy knows that the guard will sometimes fall asleep. So all we have to do is go back and miraculously, even though it's only been a few seconds, the guard's asleep. And that's the end of chapter one. <laughs> and yes, because uh, old NES game, we even get passwords. So now we're in the main city, which is Celadoria. There's uh, an old garlic wanderer on the bench. And basically, the garlic wanderer, if you talk to him, uh, tells you that he wants some coffee. And we have to go get him coffee. But we're going to check the, ma the fountain first, then we're going to hit it to get some coins. Otherwise, we cannot buy any coffee. So, coffee shop. Buy the wanderer some coffee. She doesn't have any donuts, unfortunately, though. So, uh, if the wanderer wants some donuts, he's out of luck. While we're here, we're also going to go to the antique shop. So, there's a series of events that we're going to need to do in order to get some more um, coins. Because, essentially, what we have is we have gold. We need the Saladorian coins. So, by talking to this, uh, this pair here, he's going to give us a little mission to do. And once we're finished doing that mission, he will exchange our gold for the Saladarian coins. So basically, he's gonna give us uh, he's gonna give us a letter to give to Miss Peach, pretty pretty Miss Peach, and send us on our way. So Miss Peach happens to work at the deli. Look how cute she is. She's so happy. And we're going to give her the letter from the payer dude. And she gives us a sandwich. I think that's a fair exchange, right? A sandwich for a letter. I'd like an exchange like that. <clears throat> so now, before we go back and talk to the pair, we're going to give this wanderer the coffee he wants. Of course, he asks us for a donut. You stupid wanderer. Why do you want a donut? There were no donuts. I guess now we have to go find a donut. So since the coffee shop didn't have any, uh, he tells us to go take a look at the cabaret. But we have no idea where the cabaret is. So we're going to have to go find the cabaret. All we know that it's somewhere on Main Street. But first, let's go tell the uh, lovely paired guy that we gave Miss Peachy his letter. But we're going to keep the sandwich. I, I want to keep the sandwich. So yeah, so in doing this, he now switched our gold for coins. And we're good for the rest of this chapter. Da, 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 da. So with this, we can check the strip, and we find, oh, hey, there's a cabaret down there. Let's go that way, because that's the only way, apparently, we're going to get our donut. Um, in order to enter, though, and the reason that we needed to exchange our gold for coins is both to enter here, 
you have to give one coin essentially every time you enter the cabaret. Um, we're also going to use another one here by talking to the waiter. And uh, at first he doesn't say anything, but talking to him a couple of times, he tells us, oh yeah, there's this guy I want you to meet and uh, he's waiting for you in the bathroom. I don't know why he's waiting in the bathroom, but let's go take a look. And we tip him a coin. So that's two coins. But, um, well, there's nobody here. So, uh, just for, for, the, for the lulls, I'm going to check the trash a couple of times. Oh, hey, look, there's a donut in the trash. I'm just going to take that. That's not disgusting at all, right? Not even a little bit. Now we can take it to the, uh, to the wanderer, right? He, he, will, he won't know. You won't tell him, right? He, he totally won't know anything about the, the fact that we found the donut in the trash. <laughs> oh, Octoberry! If you have your Octoberry emotes, now's the time to spam them. Octoberry! Yeah, usually every time Octoberry goes by, uh, Octoberry leaves a coin behind and we can grab it. <laughs> we didn't have to do that, but why not, right? Because it's Octoberry. So, the Garlic Wonder seems to be gone, but uh, there's a crying kid and, uh, and I guess his dad on the bench. Uh, if you talk to them, you find out the kid is hungry, so we're going to give him that sandwich that uh, Miss Peachy gave us. And if you want to feed kids, hey, all you have to do is exclamation donate, and you can donate to this super awesome cause. I know, Michelle. It's for good reason, though. <laughs> but now that we fed the kid, uh, we can talk to his dad. Yes, exactly. Several donation incentives are still available, including, uh, let's see. We've got some Castlevania where all wall meats will be collected and some Chippendale where we're going to get all the apples and ducktails with cake and ice cream. Oh my gosh, how can you not want cake and ice cream and ducktails? You, you should absolutely donate for those incentives. Those are the best sounding incentives. But anyway, talking to this guy, we find out that he used to be the minister until uh, the pumpkin guy took over. And uh, he tells us about this secret resistance base in the Parsley Forest. And essentially what we need to do is we need to get in touch with these resistance folks. He also tells us that uh, there's a hermit on the mountainside that we can go talk to for a little bit more information. So the only useful thing that this hermit tells us is that the, the general of the resistance is suffering from a very severe headache and that the pharmacy that's next to the cabaret will sell us some aspirin. Other than that, um, then he suddenly miraculously loses his hearing and um, he's not good to us anymore. <laughs> so at this point, the only thing we can do is go get the aspirin for the general, right? Because we want to get in good with the resistance, folks. So we're going to go back to the cabaret because we didn't really see any pharmacies. Um, but so this is a really weird trigger. If you praise the barker, he tells you where the pharmacy is. And that's literally the only way to find out where the pharmacy is. This part frustrated me so much as a kid. <laughs> wanna so I, we want to talk to this guy and uh, he's he's part of the resistance too so he's gonna give us the aspirin for the general's headache and uh, tells us exactly kind of what we wanted which is that 
you know, by giving the general this aspirin, he would probably take us into the resistance. So with the aspirin in hand, now we got to figure out where this resistance base is. Maybe that's that uh, wanderer on the bench before can help us again. Oh, never mind. He's gone. But there's a cute little flower girl. So uh, let's buy a flower because suddenly we're FF7. <laughs> so we buy her flower. That's the third coin that we needed. And uh, she tells us about this bookshop on the other side of the park. It's supposed to be a, a resistance contact point and that they're going to re rescue the princess. So let's go check it out. Um, well, this guy looks kind of sus. So we talk to him. He doesn't really say too much. Uh, and you can keep talking to him until you're blue in the face. But technically, you gotta hit him. <laughs> Tells us he knows absolutely nothing. And then he runs away. So if you check around everything, the only thing you actually find out is that there is a key on the counter. And we're going to take the key. Apparently it's going to be useful later. I don't know why, but oh well. Oh, this was a bus. Let's get out of here. Uh-oh. Rip! We got captured. So technically at the end of every chapter, um, whatever you don't need to progress on to the next part, Percy loses, quote-unquote. <laughs> so yeah, he either drops stuff or he claims that uh, the farmies took it from him, but uh, whatever it is, um, he basically loses all your extra cool things. Yeah, now we've been captured. What are we gonna do now? <laughs> it's like the start of FF5. <laughs> no, the flower girl is not gonna be made into a fruit salad. <laughs> so now we've been thrown into the jail. Take a look at these seedy inmates. So there's a bunch of different uh, root vegetables here and a mushroom. But the only thing that we need to do is hit the potato. I don't know why it's the potato, but apparently the potato knows all. So once we hit the potato, he spills all the beans. No pun intended. Maybe there is, maybe it's not. But yeah, so he's like, here, I have this file, take it, use it. Get out of here. Just don't hit me again. But lucky us, we use the file and uh, we get captured <laughs> literally right away. <laughs> and so we get taken to Sergeant Pepper's room because, uh, I mean, what else would you name a police sergeant besides Sergeant Pepper? Come on. So we talk to him a couple of times. He wants to know what we're doing and he accuses us of being resistance members and then he wants to know what the what Percy's hiding. So the only way to get out of here and not have him just repeat the same thing over again is to actually give him the file that the potato gave us. <laughs> and he gets so angry that he locks us in the torture room and threatens to drown us. So you check around the vicinity and the only thing you find is that there's a small hole in the door. Maybe we can hit the door and get out of here. Nope. Let's try again. Nope. So Sergeant Pepper's like, oh yeah, they're not getting out of here. I can just leave them to their, to their death. <laughs> Where is this lonely heart club? <laughs> But he's gone now. Let's try hitting it again. Oh, oh, it rattled. Okay, let's try this again. Aha, the hole is actually a keyhole. And amazingly enough, we found the key in a city that's not even near here. <laughs> let's get out of here. This is coincidence, the video game. <laughs> but we're out of there. We're going to live. 
and we find ourselves outside of this jail cell. So uh, let's check and let's let's see let's see what's going on here. Uh, oh, not check. Sorry. It's always a difference between check and look. But if we look inside, there's somebody inside. Oh, there we go. Okay. Had to do it twice. So the garlic wanderer that we originally gave the cup of coffee to uh, was arrested. I guess that's why he wasn't there anymore. But, um, hey, dude, we got your donut. <laughs> asparagus donut. I, I don't know. I like asparagus and I like donuts. I don't know if I like them together. <laughs> but even though we gave him the donut, uh, he still wants more. He is very greedy. I do not like this garlic. This is the only garlic I don't like. So in order to get him to do anything, <laughs> we have to basically leave the area and go back. And uh, he tells us that he made this little grenade out of soap. And he gives it to us to use maybe as a joke uh this garlic is not very very nice <laughs> so now with the grenade in hand maybe we can do something with it so there's a closet over here no not over here too far over um uh, ba -ba, ba -ba. sorry right side is the closet here we go so there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can take in here. There's the sick, the uh, the sickle, the paper, the bucket. Can't actually take the barrel; it's too heavy. Um, and the rope. So the rope is the only useful thing. Uh, anything else you try to take basically gets lost at the end of the chapter. But now that we have the rope and we have this grenade, we can go in here. And we find Sergeant Pepper again. He's still pretty angry. <laughs> Take the sickle. <laughs> what am I going to do with the sickle, MDI? <laughs> and we're going to scare him with this soap grenade. Because apparently Sergeant Pepper is not too bright. And while he's scared, we're going to tie him up. <laughs> he looks a little hot under the collar. Yes, yes, yes. Very good chat. I love this chat. So now that he's tied up, there's no risk of him uh, coming to arrest us again. And we're going to go back. Can I kick the bucket? Wow. Wow. <laughs> but when we go back in here, interestingly enough, there's a new item. And uh, it's that lantern that's sitting on the shelf next to the bucket. <laughs> and we're going to take that lantern. So interestingly... Um, if you move out to the front, uh, and you see the cops, all the cops are actually holding lanterns. So the idea is take the lantern, pretend we're one of the cops and slip right past them. Even though we look nothing like them, we're going to slip right past them just by using the lantern. <laughs> see right there. I don't think I, any of those look like a cucumber. So, but I guess they're not so bright either. So bye guys. <laughs> Sorry, boss. I lost some of our stuff when we were running away. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's, that's the next chapter. <laughs> so we've escaped from the jail. Now we can finally do something good, right? Hopefully. Uh-oh, we're just back at the intersection again. There are text games where if you choose to kick a bucket, you get an instant game over. Yes. Yes, there are. The one in the back looked kind of like a cucumber. Oh my god, please. <laughs> so we're back kind of where we started, but um, some things have changed. So uh, we're going to check the bush that's down here. We get some fern birds. We see their nest. Check the bush again. 
Oh, look, there happens to be an umbrella. Let's take the umbrella. It, it might be necessary later on. We're also going to take some more water because just as just as much as the, the creatures here have been neglected the first time we were here, things haven't really gotten any better. So let's go check on our friends. Let's see how they're doing. Hopefully they're in a little bit better shape. Oh, well, heck. Um, they're gone. <laughs> it seems that uh, the farmies have taken the melons um, to do God knows what with. But we're going to check out this hole right here in particular because this hole is a mole hole. And we need the mole that's inside of it to give us something useful. And because moles do not like the sunlight... Oh, hey! Look, we have an umbrella. So this mole is also dehydrated. Even though he's not a fruit or a vegetable, they're not even giving the moles water. That, that's how bad it is. That's how bad this whole situation is. So he tells us about this monster called Saladron in the Parsley Forest. And that he's protecting some special treasure called the Yam Medallion that we're going to need later on. He tells us Saladron is extremely dangerous and that we have to be super careful. Um, and he found the left half of some weird instructions by a big tree that he's going to give to us. Because, well, what is he going to do with them? He's a mole. He tells us also to go see the forest guard uh, and that the watermelon can give us a hand. So let's go back and talk to the watermelon. You want to pet this mole? I know it is a very cute mole. So we're going to give this watermelon some more water because, well, we've been gone a little while and watermelon is dehydrated again. And the watermelon tells us that everybody was harvested um, and that he saw the forest guard was carrying this blue umbrella, but he lost it. And he also tells us where the forest guard lives because we need to talk to the forest guard in order to get into the parsley forest. So now we can go over there. Nobody seems to be here. Let's take a look around a little bit. And we come across this little river. So... Uh, Percy, being as useful as he ever is, can't swim. And the only way to get him across that little stream is to get him some water wings. So, hey Percy, why don't you go knock on the door? So, the leak comes out. And, oh, hey, look, we found your umbrella. Oh, I guess we can't give it to him yet. There we go. Let's talk to him first and then give him the umbrella. There you go. Okay. So in exchange for the umbrella, interestingly enough, he's got the water wings. So we're going to take those and we're going to be on our merry way. And this is where we run into our first boss battle. <laughs> So this is one of the farmies, and uh, essentially all of the battles in this game are a combination of rock, paper, scissors, and then uh, look away, basically. So you not only have to beat them in rock, paper, scissors, but then you also have to beat them and point in the same direction where they're going to look in order to win the fight. So some of them have, uh, some of them have patterns and some of them don't. And uh, luckily, this farmy always looks down. So as long as you can beat him in rock, paper, scissors, uh, you just keep pushing down, and that's where he's going to look. So now we enter the dungeon crawling part of the game. And uh, there's a couple of things that we have to collect as we go through the parsley forest. Uh, hopefully, I, I can get through here without too much issue. But we need the tin can, and we need the shovel before we get to Saladron's lair. Uh, 
uh, let's see, all the way at the end. So yeah, um, <laughs> it's not, this one in particular is not, uh, is not too large of a dungeon. So if you do get lost, there's only so many places that you can go, but, uh, it does look very similar, uh, as you go through it. So it might be a little bit difficult to get through. So we're going to move again. I'm going to go back. And then we're going to go pick up the shovel. By the way, I, I, I do have a map because I, I this, as you go through the game, some of the later dungeons uh, get much larger and much more complicated to go through. So it was just easier to have a map of all the dungeons up. <laughs> Alright, so I think we're going to go this way. Unless I just got myself lost, which is possible. Yes, I did. Okay. Oh, well. We'll use that opportunity and take the pouch. Which is empty. Feels bad. <laughs> hmm. Compass is good, but it doesn't help us too much. Uh, anyway, while I'm while I am going through this uh, through this dungeon, just a reminder that we are here to raise money for Random Max charity to raise uh, to to feed hungry kids all over the world. So if you want to donate to this super awesome cause exclamation point donate you can see the incentives that we have as well as uh, how much has been raised towards each incentive and there's still about four incentives left uh, that have not been met I got myself lost but that's okay Okay, that's where the can was. Okay, so let's use that as a reference point. I love that it tells you things like that because it helps you kind of find your way if you get lost. <laughs> Alright, now we follow this all the way to the end and we go back here. There we go, okay. Huzzah! We found the evil tree! Wait, I thought I was looking for Saladron. <laughs> but, uh, so the reason that we needed to find the can and the shovel, so we're gonna use a tin can, we're gonna kick it into the tree, make Saladron mad, and then he'll come out and fight us. Uh, he's literally a dude with a salad on his head. <laughs> and we get into the next fight. So, with Saladron, Saladron always uses paper. <clears throat> And, uh, but he does not necessarily look the same direction every time. So it is a matter of trying to figure out which direction he looks. So you can keep spamming scissors and then just wait for him to look in the right direction three times. And then Saladron has been defeated. So with Saladron defeated, we can go inside the tree. There seems to be like this little altar that we can check out. Plants are very scary in this game, I agree.
And there's also this mound of dirt underneath the altar. And that's why we needed the shovel. So we're going to dig for a while. <laughs> I'm digging. I'm digging. And eventually we uncover the metal. We check it out. It happens to be the yam yeah medallion that we were looking for. We can take it and be on our merry way. No, you can't wear it, Percy. So Mr. Leek is out here waiting for us to congratulate us on a job well done. And for defeating Saladron, he agrees to take us to the Resistance base and gives us grape soda. Oh, grape juice, not grape soda. Um, I don't know why... He wants to give us grape juice as a reward, but okay. I mean, grape juice is pretty tasty, right? I mean, it kind of is plant blood, sort of, kind of. <laughs> Especially when you see what we do with it. <laughs> it's pretty creepy. <laughs> So here's the resistance base. Uh, it just, all we can see from the outside is a, a very plain wall with some boxes and some ivy. But let's go in and let's see what's going on. Ooh, people are talking inside. Let's go in. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all make this game even more scary. What the heck? <laughs> so the best thing to do is to use this metal because essentially this metal is a symbol that we are part of the resistance. So they tell us that we're going to go rescue Princess Tomato and then we see Lisa. So, Lisa is Princess Tomato's sister, even though she's not a tomato. <laughs> and she also tells us the same thing that the Hermit tells us, which is that the General has a massive headache, so we're going to give her the aspirin to give to him. And move back out of here. I mean, Lisa's technically a princess? So this, this particular chapter has some very strange, uh, very strange triggers and it's a lot of going in and out of rooms. <laughs> so we're going to go see Lisa again, assuming that she's had enough time to give the general the the headache medicine and she leads us to him and it's general cantaloupe hi dude the general is very appreciative and gives us uh i think it's clover juice but he also tells us that we have to go into sopville and sopville is full of farmies and if we just waltz in as we are of course we're going to be recognized so we need to find some way to get in there and he also gives us the Crest of the Resistance. Sorry, he's not the one that gives us Clover Juice. It's not somebody else. He gives us the Crest de la Resistance. And uh, if you talk to Lisa a couple more times, you kind of find out that she's lost her pendant, which is uh, a royal symbol, and we're going to go find it for her. Because the best place to find a pendant is in the trash, just like with the donuts. So in these cardboard boxes, there's a bunch of trash and some banana skin and a shiny object. <laughs> so we find out that it's the pendant. It's been thrown away by accident. Who the heck would throw away her pendant? That's not okay. Trash donuts, you feel attacked. <laughs> RBW, we always blame Percy. That's how this works. 
Also, Tool23, thank you for the $10 donation. Heckin' awesome of you. And again, if anybody else wants to donate, exclamation point, donate, and you can put your donation towards incentives, too. But we got Lisa's pendant. Let's go give it to Lisa. I bet she'll give us something good. Boss, we're breaking in. So this is Lisa's room. <laughs> and if you go here at any other time until you talk to the general, she's actually not in here. She tells us that she's looking for the pendant that she lost. And then you can give her the pendant that we found if my inputs would like to do that. There we go. Grapes are the new mistletoe. Apparently, Smitty. Apparently. So we give her some time to process the fact that she's got her pendant back a whole five seconds. <laughs> I think. I think. Wait, wait. I think I'm forgetting you. Oh, wait. We gotta go talk to the other dude first. Hold on. Go back, and then we go talk to the guy at the left room, which is why this game is really creepy. It's a grape. <laughs> and, uh, well, we give him grape juice. And this is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. <laughs> and he gives us clover juice, and I don't think it makes it any better. <laughs> this game is terrible. <laughs> yes, the grape is drunk on grape juice. It's awful. <laughs> but, um, Lisa tells us that Grapey was really happy that we gave him the juice, and that there's an arms room across the hallway that he was guarding. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, at least we can go into the arms room now. Bye, weird grape dude. Uh, so there's there's a whole bunch there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. There's bombs, there's a cannon, there's little swords and a pea machine gun, but the only thing that we really need is the nut bomb. And again, anything else you take, uh Percy will drop because hashtag blame Percy. <laughs> So we're going to go back to the meeting room and we're going to get the heck away from this grape, this cannibal grape. And we're finally going to talk to those matching soldiers. So most of these guys don't really matter. We're only interested in talking to the chief. He is the most important here. And he tells us that we can go to the Peanut Village uh, via the Carrot Plateau. So we're going to go that way. And we're going to take our leave of this horrible resistance base. Congratulations. Here's the password you get for, for grape cannibalism. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really awful. Let's get out of here. To more pleasant places. <laughs> so now we're on the the Cara Plateau and there's a little there's a little village of peanuts over here. <clears throat> and uh essentially in Talking to the chief and his wife, we find out that their daughter was kidnapped by the evil Bonanda. And that this banana could have eaten their daughter already. What is with this place? Why are they eating each other? <laughs> the wife tells us that their house is at the far end of the village and we can tell you more stuff there. Wait, what? Oh, I gotta check first. Hold on. 
always with the checks. Check the vicinity. There's the village chief's house and a park. So we go to the house. We talk to the chief. We figure out what's going on. And he's like, oh yeah, you can find Bananda's cave over there. Please save our nutty. We'll reward you handsomely. Where is the yogurt raisins? Oh gosh. <laughs> Is dragon fruit a literal dragon? Unfortunately, there's no dragon fruit. I'm sorry. Um, so we know where Bonanza's cave is, but we're going to go to the park first. Uh, we're going to pick up a coin off the lawn. Uh, I don't know why people are leaving their coins on the lawn, but what the heck? It works out well for us. And we're also going to talk to this shroom and Pija. Oh, I got to check first, don't I? So the, it's basically more story trigger. So by talking to the mushroom, we find out about the convenience store. And by talking to Pijo, we find out about another hermit. A carrot hermit this time. Not Park. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and the Hudson Bee just hanging out. Exactly. It's all good. So we're going to go to the store and we're going to buy some squid. Because um, who doesn't like squid? Right? Right? Sure. You know, though, if you want to buy some squid for some hungry kids, you can donate to this cause. But the reason we actually bought the squid was because of this hermit. And the hermit's favorite food is actually squid. <laughs> so we're going to give him the squid. Because we're just generous people. He's like, oh, it's my favorite food. And uh, he tells us that we need to get a lamb from the village chief. So without doing this, uh, you can technically go into Bonanza's cave, but it's a little difficult. And Percy won't go very far. And uh, there's a, like a little um, trick here where you can kind of just warp back to where you started by hitting the hermit. Ha! Don't underestimate my power! You're warped back to the beginning and he saves us time. <laughs> but, uh, now we can check out the cave real quick just to see what it looks like. Uh, we try to enter but Percy's like, no, it's too dark and we need a lamp. Alright, fine, we'll go get the lamp. God, Percy. Oh, I'm sorry. Percy has to ask for the lamp specifically. If he says, oh yeah, we'll save Nutty for you. Just give us a lamp so that we can see where we're going. <laughs> Alright, now we can go back. With Percy's bright ideas. Oh, Garen Thor. Now we can go into the cave. Now we can save Nutty. So the first time we go in here, it's really not bad because you take two steps and banana. But uh, luckily, this fight doesn't work like the others do. And all we have to do is explode him. <laughs> no more banana. <laughs> But uh, we gotta say we still have a little girl to save, so uh, we're gonna do some disgusting digging through these banana skins until we find her. That's true. Banana doesn't have hands. You do have a point, Joko. Oh look, we found her. She's alive. So she thanks us, and she comes with us, and uh, we're going to get out of here for now. We'll be back, though.
So as soon as we get out of the cave, Nutty goes running back home. Because, uh, well, I would be happy too to get away from a, an evil banana. So now we can go talk to the chief. Oh, look how happy they are. They're so cute. So you don't have to talk to them here. You only have to talk to the chief at his house. You don't need to talk to Nutty either. And the chief gives us his battery to start this machine called the Dysomatic. So apparently that's what Bonanda has been guarding. The Dysomatic. But before we can go in, we're going to go see the hermit again. Because the hermit, if you keep talking to him, tells us to come back after we've defeated Bonanda. And this time, we're going to give him that lovely clover juice that we have. Because he also really likes that stuff. And he gives us medicine, which we're going to need later. And then we're going to hit him again, and he's going to send us back to the beginning so that we get back here faster. And we're going to go into the next maze, the rest of this banana cave. This map is, like, upside down, which is very aggravating. <laughs> Technically, though, uh, there's nothing extra that we have to pick up here now. We really only have to... Uh, find our way to the Dysomatic, which is good. <laughs> so, one, two, three. Turn down this way. Uh, let's see. Go west. And then all the way to the end. And da 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 dysomatic. So here's the real reason that we needed the uh, the yam medallion. The yam medallion is actually the key. That gets us inside. So some nice uh, futuristic robots. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of uh, putzing around that you have to do with stuff in here to get the Dysomatic to work. Uh, and it's really strange set of triggers, but you use the battery. And we don't know where it goes, so then we take a look, we check around the vicinity to see if we can find a place where it goes. And we find it, and now we can finally put it in. So the lights are on, and we still need to uh, check things out, though. So we hit the lever. Nothing happens. Hit the lever again, and it starts. It's not quite a spaceship. It, it, I guess it's kind of like a really bad mech. <laughs> but we're going to head for that giant tree for no other reason than why not. We can only apparently move forward anyway. But, uh-oh, lots of dysomatics. And a farby! Oh no! So, um, there really isn't too much of a way to do this fight well. There's not, like, a pattern or anything like there are with some of the other fights. Basically, you just have to hope you get the right direction that he's looking in. 
There's no pattern to it, unfortunately. <laughs> There's one. It's two. It should have been only two, but I lost one. There we go. This is literally rock, paper, scissors, yes. And also, we find Minister Pumpkin in his Dysomatic here. And we gotta fight him too. He's in his horrible looking mecha, but we gotta fight him. Ooh, nice. Oops. But yeah, the, the minister and, uh, and, uh, the farmy kind of just look left and right for the most part, and it's a matter of Pressing left to right at the right time, but yeah, so we defeated them and they ran away But we're gonna all, all we're gonna also get out of here because there's nothing else we can do in this Dysomatic now We defeated their mecha, so that's good enough So this is also a weird set of triggers you have to check all the parts of the tree There's some strange looking grass there. So we're gonna take the grass. Why must I always fight? Why can't I just Percy? Because Percy is uh, only good in certain situations. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, so. We find this super awesome chameleon grass. Hmm, sounds like something I could use for disguising myself. <coughs> and luckily, on the ground are the instructions. The other half of the instructions that the mole gave us. So we're going to take those. We're going to check them out. We're going to finally be able to read the instructions. And it basically tells us how to use the chameleon grass. All you have to do is put it in your mouth and turn around three times, because that totally makes sense. The first time we use it, though, we turn into a hamburger and pizza, because apparently you turn into whatever you're thinking of. <laughs> so we got to do this the right way and turn into farmies. <laughs> I know, isn't that super convenient? This is totally, totally convenient. But now that we're disguised as farmies, we can get into Sopville. And go on to the next part. <clears throat> yes, I will take your password. And I will use it. In case something bad happens. If my phone would like to zoom out. Thank you. But we are... Uh, we're getting close to the end here, but that's okay, because we still have some awesome stuff left here. So, we find ourselves in this uh, old western kind of town. But we're disguised as farmy, so, you know, even if we see these fruits and vegetables, what are we going to do? Oh, wait! Aha! Uh -huh. We... We have the crest that the, uh, that the general gave us. Are you guys really farmies? Well, no. <laughs> so we show the crest to the squash. And this whole area is a bunch of back and forth and talking and going out of places and going back to places. And yeah, it's a bunch of weird set of triggers. And if you play this the first time casually, like, it's butts to try to get through. But, uh, but apparently the squash tells us that there's actually resistance people here and a secret passage to go into the castle, and he tells us where to find out about it. But, uh, well, I'm thirsty. Are you thirsty? I'm kind of thirsty. Let's check out what this building is. Oh, hey, it's a bar. Let's go in there. 
So even with the bar, there is a specific order in which you have to check out and talk to people. So you check out the people at a counter, you got George, Dan, and Radish Ron, and you literally have to talk to them in the order in which they're listed. And then we use the crest on Ron. And he's like, no wait, don't do don't show that in here. It's too dangerous. Too dangerous. So, okay, too dangerous. We're gonna leave. And then go back in. <laughs> and then uh, we're gonna repeat a little bit. We're gonna talk to... We're gonna talk to George. And then we're gonna talk to Dan. Because these guys are getting kind of drunk at this point. And we're gonna talk to Ron a few times. He's like, these guys are helping the minister. And he's holding the princess in his castle. Okay. But uh, we're gonna let Ro we're gonna let Ron get a little bit more drunk. And then we're gonna go talk to him again. And the silly thing about this is you actually have to use the crest one more time. And then talk to him again. Like I said, it's kind of a ridiculous set of triggers in this point. He's, he's like super drunk at this point. He's like, oh, long live the resistance. I don't care who hears me. Um, and he tells us he found uh, a key to the castle garden and one of the rooms. But he doesn't know which room in the castle. Because apparently the castle is super big. But uh, thanks for the key, Ron. Also, I'm sorry if you hear that noise in the background. <laughs> Alright, so we got the key. Next set of, uh, of strange plot triggers. So we come across these two dudes. They don't look suspicious at all. Not even a little bit. And we're going to check them out. We got, uh, we got EP and DR. I know EP is eggplant. DR, I don't know. Oh, Daikon Radish. Oh, haha, I, I just got it. I'm so smart today. So we talk to the Daikon, and he's like, I hate farmies. Well, um, hey, we're not really farmies. Take a look. So we talk to him one more time. He's like, oh, you're resistance soldiers. Someone dug a tunnel to the castle, and uh, the old lady, she kind of knows, knows about it. So you should go talk to her. And this poor old lady is actually sick. So we're going to give her the medicine and make her feel better before we even try to talk to her. Also, apparently there's gold on the ground here. We're going to take your gold if you dropped it. Sorry, lady. <laughs> so, yeah. She tells us specifically that the dug passage is down P Street, but it's not complete. So, you got to take some tools with you to kind of uh, keep going. So, basically, what we need is, an is another shovel. Because Percy dropped the first one. Thanks, Percy. So, the reason that we need the gold coin that's here on the ground is that you kind of have to bribe the eggplant... To give you the shovel. It's going to cost one gold coin. So we're going to give him the gold. And it doesn't matter how many gold coins you have in your inventory. However many you have, they all go to the eggplant. So he gives us the shovel. And then we can move down to the passage. So technically, talking around, um, asking around also tells you which way to go in the passage, but hopefully I wrote the directions down properly. <laughs> and you ignore what Percy says.
And there's a huge rock block in the way. So now we can finally use the shovel. And Percy loses our stuff again. Feels bad. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know which way to go through the maze, um, it sucks. <laughs> no lies. It sucks. Cat, get off my phone. How am I going to take a picture of the password if case I die if you're sitting on my phone? But yeah, it is possible to die at the boss fights, and there's a lot of boss fights coming up because we are about to hit the last chapter of this game, Minister Pumpkin's Castle. Phone belongs to the cat now. I mean, she tries. She tries real hard, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> so we find ourselves in here after going through the, uh, the passageway. We check out the area, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. We're going to use some of it. Um look first and then and then check <laughs> so we're gonna take both the oil pot and the pine tar so the oil pot we're actually going to use um, but the reason that we take the pine tar is because there was a chain underneath the pot it's the only reason so we're gonna take the chain and we're gonna move on in and of course Percy has things to say about the horrible color scheme of the carpet <laughs> so yeah there's a whole bunch of doors that you can check out and go in and out and in and out but there as, as usual there is a specific set of triggers and things that you have to do to get through this area so first we're gonna go to the near right door um, and go inside and we're gonna find a maid just as we're getting ready to um, leave, she pops out. So it's not Princess Tomato, but it's Princess Tomato's maid. And she tells us the princess went to go take a bath. But Farmies, because we're still disguised from the chameleon grass, should be at the festival. So we're gonna go, um, well, we're going to go to the spy on the princess in the bath. <laughs> Don't look it though. It won't taste like grapes. Oh, God. Um, all right. So now, far left door. We're going to go in there. And we see somebody in the shower that looks kind of like it might be a tomato. Maybe it's Princess Tomato. Hey, is anybody in there? Okay. I feel jaded. That is not a tomato. That's an orange. <laughs> and she tells us the Princess went for a walk in the garden. Well, thank you for still being really nice to us, even though we spied on you in the shower. <laughs> Now we're going to go far right. And we're going to use the key on this door. So this is the only door that the key actually opens up, I think. It might be there might be one other one, but it's not useful. And the whole purpose of going in this room is actually to find out about Minister Pumpkin Jr. and the fact that um, he's afraid of caterpillars. Uh, paper there it is so yeah it's a letter from from pumpkin jr we find out that pumpkin jr is a thing that exists and uh yeah that's it <laughs> but it's a plot trigger it's a plot trigger so we're gonna go check out the garden now 
Because we still need to find the princess. Do, 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 do. Turn left. It leads outside. So without activating that plot trigger, I believe that there really is much you can do from here on out until you actually see the note from uh, Pumpkin Jr. So we look around, we see this gorgeous pond out here. So uh, apparently Minister Pumpkin's been hoarding all the water to himself. We tell Percy to go check out the pond. And uh, well, he slips and falls in. <laughs> but luckily, uh, we have, still have the water wings we can give to him and he can get out of the pond. That's a really deep pond for him to fall in and be drowning though. And he finds this weird ornament in the pond. And this is the most ridiculous set of plot triggers, but... <laughs> so, as we go forward, we see that there's this shadow of a guard. And in order to distract the guard, we have to not give anything away. We have to use the ornament as a distraction. Where is the ornament? Then we're going to put the oil down on the ground to make him slip. I don't know why the ornament was a distraction, but whatever. And then we're going to use the chain and tie up the guard. So without doing all of this, you can't get past this area to go to the second set of doors. So we end up in front of this jail cell door. I, I don't know why, but we're going to check the hallway and we're going to find out that there's a, uh, a set of keys on the floor. And this is a weird one too because you have to check before you look before the keys will actually appear. Oh, whoops, sorry. I have to use the keys before we can actually uh, go into the jail cell. So there's some more uh, captured vegetables in here. And we're going to show them the crust, show them that, that we're not actually farmies, so that they actually might talk to us. No? What do I have to do first? Oh, I have to look first. Uh. And there's a barrel in the corner. The barrel looks to be empty at first, but there is a dude called Whiteleaf in there. So now we're going to use the crest. And because the white leaf is in the barrel, well, we actually are going to have to show him the, uh, oh, I forgot to take water. We're actually going to have to show him the crest separately, but I forgot to take water, so we got to go back. Please hold. Uh, now I have to remember which door is the jail cell door. There we go. Okay. Alright. Now we can give the, the white leaf some water. So now that he's awake, we can talk to him. He's got a very strange look, but that's okay. We're going to show him the crest and everything will be fine. He was like, oh, you're resistance soldiers. And uh, he's actually the one that tells us that, uh, that his son is allergic and doesn't like caterpillars. But we got to find a caterpillar. Where are we going to find a caterpillar? Well... This is kind of disgusting, but, well, the prisoners have kind of been in here for a while. Um, and there's a caterpillar crawling on the lettuce, so we're just going to take that and go. Sorry, dude. <laughs> All 
All right, next set of triggers involves uh, getting a hold of Princess Tomato. So we're going to do a lot of going in and out of rooms. So we see this uh, lady that looks like a tomato, for sure, sleeping in the bed, but she's asleep. So we can't really do anything right now. But let's take a look around. Like, oh, hey, there's a door over there. Let's... let's... Mm -hmm. Check it first and then go through it. Not the vase. <laughs> yes, the flowers are beautiful, but they won't help us. The door is unlocked. Now we can go through it. We're going to look around in here. Cannot, unfortunately, just wake her up. I mean, I wish we could. But we're going to exit right from here. This is a very strange set of plot triggers. So we're going to go back into the room that we just saw the uh, the sleeping lady in. We're going to go back in again. This time she's gone, though. Hmm. Well. Now that we know of the existence of the right door, we're going to go through the right door. And we are now in the princess's dressing room. So, um, if you check around this area, uh, you find out that the stool is, um, uh, is fake and it's false. There's, so there's basically stuff inside the stool. And we're gonna do, a, a not so nice thing. Um, as we check it, we're going to find the princess's diary. <laughs> and we're gonna read her diary. I mean, there's nothing lewd in here, unfortunately, but we find out that the princess is going to be forced into a wedding with uh, Minister Pumpkin Jr. And that she's been putting on this makeup to make herself look old and ugly in order to kind of deter him from wanting to marry her. All right, so now that we know this, we're going to exit. And we're going to go back in again. <laughs> to the first door. <laughs> oh, empty eye. Wow. <laughs> we got inside. So, huh. We see this lady. Uh, are you the princess? Well, she doesn't look like a princess. But, uh, well, maybe she is, though. So, let's try using the crest. And talk to her again. And she's like, oh, you're resistance members, but I don't trust you, because it could be fake. Because you still look like farmies, you're not going to fool me at all. And she tells us to get out of her room. Okay, well, I'm going to step back and give you a moment. And then we're going to try again. <laughs> so, the only way we can really do this is to kind of show her that we're not really farmies. Oops, I don't want to use the chameleon grass, so I'm going to give her the chameleon grass. It's like, oh. Hey. Hey. It's actually Princess Tomato. But yeah, so she's like, I couldn't trust anyone. And she asks us to, of course, destroy Minister Pumpkin and bring peace back to the Salad Kingdom. He took the turnip emblem, which is kind of the royal emblem to show that you are ruling the land. So now we know what we need to do. Let's go find Minister Pumpkin and give him what for. Princess looks like a plum. I mean... <laughs> so... 
So, this eggplant is uh, guarding the door. Technically, you really can't do anything until after you've discovered the princess is the princess. But we're gonna fight this eggplant. So, um... In terms of the eggplant strategies, once you get past the rock, paper, scissors portion, the eggplant will always look up. So you just have to beat him in the rock, paper, scissors. Oh, heck. Okay, one more. There we go. We defeated the eggplant! Huzzah! So yeah, now with the eggplant defeated, he's like, Oh wow, you guys are really good at rock, paper, scissors. I'm just gonna abandon my post and let you go inside. So we see this door in the back corner. This looks very suspicious, and it's the door to the bedroom. We're gonna go inside. Unfortunately, Minister Pumpkin does not appear to be around, but let's take a look around anyway. Hey, look, there's another trophy. So we check the shelf. Um, we see that it's filled with books. We take the books. And we check out the books. Check out the titles. The one who became Cinderella's coach and Halloween's heroes. I like the first one. The first one is pretty fantastic. But it does say that when retreating from baby monster, go straight until you have to turn. So the next, the last maze of this game has a very specific order of things that you have to do. And if you hit them in the wrong order, you don't get to fight the boss until you hit them in the right order. So. <laughs> With that in mind, we're going to check out the bed. And the bed moves away from the wall and reveals a set of stairs. Dun, dun, dun. But as we check the stairs, somebody pushes us down. Oh, no. And now we're in the basement maze. <clears throat> so the first thing we have to do is we have to go find baby monster first. It's like a, it's like a trigger. Um, and you can run into mama monsters, but we're going to try not to do that. So, I want to go to the second intersection, after this, not this one, but this one, and then all the way down. You walked into Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom, and then we're going to head west, all the way over. And then south. And we're going to run into Baby Monster. Oh, hi. There really isn't anything else you have to do with Baby Monster outside of finding Baby Monster. <laughs> but now we're going to go through the three holes and they have to be gone through in the right order. So we're going to we're going to backtrack out of here. Doesn't matter, he's gonna appear in front of us no matter which way we go, but we're gonna head back north, all the way up. And there's the first hole. It's like, oh, you just came from Baby Monster? Good job. <laughs> Now we're going to go all the way east to the second hole. It's like, oh, you came from the first hole. Keep going. I 
I know. Good thing it was only a baby. Agreed. And then we're going to hit the third hole, which is the last hole. Like, now go to where Papa Monster is hiding. Okay. Who is holding those holes? You don't want to know. <laughs> So, Papa Monster is another fight you have to do, but Papa Monster, thankfully, always looks left. So you have to win the rock, paper, scissors, and then point to the left. I totally know my left and my right. There we go. Papa Monster is defeated. We did it. We got through the basement maze. We defeated Papa Monster. We find an opening in the wall. And we're back in the bedroom with Minister Pumpkin. Final showdown time. Because he's been waiting for us. So, there's supposed to be a pattern to this. I don't know what it is, but, um, <laughs> bless RNG. Come on, come on, give me two more times, please. No! Oh, heck. Oh, no. This is not good. There's like no way to tell which direction he's going to be looking in. So this is uh this is not good right now. Oh crud. <laughs> um well <laughs> That happens, unfortunately. Whoops, not G. That's not the right one. Uh-oh. Uh, I didn't get the right one then. This is not good.
But yes, I'm sorry for my terrible RNG, and uh, thank you for sticking around so far to donate to this super awesome charity. There are some uh, donation incentives coming up while I find the right password. <laughs> But yeah, if you can help out, please, please donate. This is a really awesome cause. And all of the money is going to be uh, donated directly to this charity. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, in the interest of time, because I'm running a little over, you know what? Let's pretend we defeated the minister. <laughs> I have a better idea. Hold on. Hold that thought. Because otherwise I have to go through this entire chapter again, and that's not going to take a short amount of time. Oh, no, come on. Give me a break, controller, please. Uh, while I'm doing this, donation incentives that you can donate towards Castlevania, all meat, all wall meat category, Chippendales, all apples will be eaten. DuckTales, all cakes and ice creams will be collected. Uh, and Super Mario Brothers 2 Warpless. So, uh, I mean, those are some pretty awesome categories. I would definitely go and, uh, go and donate towards those because I think they'd be cool to watch. But yes, yeah, so, so we totally saved the princess. Watch, I'm gonna show you right now. We totally saved her. <laughs> See, look at that. We totally saved the princess and everybody is celebrating. Absolutely saved the princess and everybody is celebrating. And even, even the general is super proud of us for doing all of that. Thank you for saving Princess Tomato. Isn't that great? Let's welcome our heroes. Uh-oh. Somebody's trying to take Princess Tomato away. It's Pumpkin Jr. We have to save her quickly. And the guy who told us where to find the hermit back in town punches him in the face. Saving the princess, but we gotta fight him. Uh, that's not the right thing. Nope. There we go. We defeated the evil Pumpkin Jr. by spamming paper. But he's still got our emblem. But we have the Caterpillar.
And he ran away like a frightened child. And we recovered the emblem. And everybody lived happily ever after. So yeah, that is Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. Totally done the entire way through, 100%. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. There is still the whole rest of the weekend into Monday morning of stuff coming up. Do not go anywhere. There is more awesome food-themed things to come. <laughs>